The absence of fear is the finest thing that can happen to a child. I have spent a good deal of my time patching up the children who've been wounded by people who gave them fear. Fear of adults, fear of punishment, fear of God. Once, a boy of 14 had just come to Summerhill, expelled from a typical public school, for stealing. I had with him a private lesson, or PLs as I call them, in formal talks by the fireside. You like the smoke, boy? See you, man. The cigarette was a way of breaking the ice. I don't smoke, sir. Take what you damn liar. I've seen the yellow fingers on you. I know you so. Here was a boy to whom headmasters were stern model disciplinarians to be cheated every time. By offering him a cigarette, I was showing him I approved of him. By calling him a damned liar, I was meeting him on his own level. It was Homer Lane who said that in order to rid a child of a bad social trait, one should let him live out his desires. I hear you're a bit of a crook boy. Do you think you'd know any way of swimming the railway? This surely was a madhouse he had come to, the principal of the school telling him how to be a better crook. I never swindled it, sir. That's not good, boy. There must be plenty of ways. We could make a lot of money, buy as many cigarettes as we wanted. <laughs> Years later, he told me that that interview was the biggest shock of his life. I wish I could have photographed his facial expression during that first interview. Freedom blowing through the soul to cleanse it of hatred. If freedom can save the far gone problem child, what could freedom do for all the so-called normal children perverted by authority? I am the man who allows him to be free. I am the daddy that daddy should have been. I am the father they daydreamed about when their real father shouted, Stop that row! I never ask if faces have been washed. I never ask for obedience. I never demand good manners. My pupils can call me a bloody fool any time they like. Yet at one time, I was a disciplinarian. My father used the toes, as we called the belt in Scotland. And as a headmaster, I followed. One day, a new sudden thought came to me. What am I doing? This boy is small and I am big. Why am I hitting someone not my own size? I put my toes in the fire and never had a child again. When my wife and I began Summerhill, we had one main idea. To try what had never been tried before, freedom. Freud showed that every neurosis is founded on sex repression. So I said, I'll have a school where there won't be any. A school where children could play when they wanted to play and learn what they wanted to learn. We've been called brave, but it did not require courage. All it required was a complete belief in the child. The greatest discovery we have made in Summerhill is that a child is born a sincere creature. Yet we educate our children in such a way that they dare not be sincere. In my school, children can walk out of the classroom and stay out for 10 years if they like. When the time comes, a free child can sit and do the work in a fraction of the time that disciplined children take years to cover. The teacher's work is simple, to find out where a child's interest lies and to help him live it out. Teacher should be seen and not heard. Banana, 
They respect me because I respect their young lives, not because I am the principal of the school. Many children are backward at school because the school is too dull for them. Even Montessori is an artificial way of making a child learn. It has nothing creative about it. All this interference from adults produces a generation of robots. Lads and lassies stuffed with useless knowledge. They have been taught to know, but have not been allowed to feel. Think what a tin god a teacher really is. He is the centre of the picture. He commands and he is obeyed. He does nearly all the talking. It is time we realise that the average young child is not much interested in school subjects. Imagine if children wrote the reports. We have proved that a free child can learn as easily, even more easily, for he knows what he wants in life. One pupil was a physicist, one a mathematician, both boys having been free to play all day if they wanted to from the age of five. Education is living. My daughter Zoe was brought up self-regulated, as I call it. The right of a baby to live freely, without outside authority on things psychic and somatic. The baby feeds when it is hungry, becomes clean in habits only when it wants to. When my daughter Zoe was two, she was on the cover of Picture Post. Outsiders from all over the world declare here is something new, a child of balance and happiness, at peace with her surroundings. Zoe was supple and free of limb. He lifted her and her body was as relaxed as a kitten. She has always been allowed to choose what she wanted to eat, and I have never before seen a child who had so little interest in food. My friend William Reich said, the child who lives in fear has a life of catching its breath and holding it. The sign of a well-reared child is her free, uninhibited breathing. It shows she is not afraid of life. Psychologists say the most psychic damage is done to a child in the first five years of life. More like the first five months, five weeks or five minutes. Unfreedom begins at birth. Nay even long before. We are all born into a life-disapproving atmosphere. Self-regulation should begin with birth. Beware of giving birth in a hospital that does not provide rooming in. Far better to have your baby at home than subjected to such cruelty. Totalitarianism begins in the nursery. That first interference is always in the matter of food, now forcing the newborn to feed according to a timetable. Feeding at the breast suggests orgastic pleasure, so the advocates of timetable feeding mould the child to put duty before pleasure. Don't lie in bed with the baby, say the pamphlets. Forget it. Give the infant as much hugging and petting as you can. Never help a child if he can do something alone. Doting parents help a child climb a chair, stealing a great joy. A child has the right to wear clothes of such a kind that it doesn't matter a brass farthing if they get messy or not. Children brought up wearing silly Sunday clothes live one lifelong lie. Every child has the right to freedom of speech. I've had many years of hearing adolescent children let off all the bloodies and hells they'd been forbidden to say in their nursery. It is quite safe to have a row with a child when you're equals. You can be on the child's side, even though you sometimes swear at them, but leave out the moral talk, the labels of dirty or naughty. Not possessive love, not sentimental love, just behaving in such a way that the child feels you approve of him. Freedom does not mean spoiling the child. If a mother thinks her child can paint the front door with red ink to express himself freely, she's incapable of grasping what self-regulation means. A child should not be given everything he asks for. Too much money spoils a child's values and handicaps their fantasy life. 
children love mud. They're naturally noisy and parents must learn to live with it. They clatter on stairs, they shout like loud, they're unconscious of furniture. Manners are an adult concept and children have no interest. Children hate to be indebted to anyone. In heaven's name, what does it really matter if Tommy sits down to a meal with unwashed hands? Children like candy because their bodies crave sugar, and in a balanced diet, sugar they should have. Religion to children means only fear. Free children who face life eagerly and bravely have no need to make any god at all. I think that if Christ could come to earth, he would leave the Sunday school scholars to the nearest cinema. The religion of the future will find God in the meadows, not the skies. A Sunday morning swimming will be holier than one spent singing hymns. We are nearer to God in masturbation than in repenting. One half hour spent with a free child is more convincing than a book of arguments. People are always saying to me, but how will your free children ever adapt to the drudgery of life? I hope that these three children will be pioneers in abolishing the drudgery of life. One day humanity will trace all its hates and diseases to a civilization that is anti-life.